I'm Tim Perry, Managing Editor of Multi-Channel Merchant. I'm on Google, Google Hangout today with Scott Wingo, the Executive Chairman and Founder of Channel Advisor. Scott, how are you doing today? Hey, Tim, pretty good. We're, uh, the dust is settling around here. The, the servers are cooling down after a, a busy five days. We, we call that five-day period the Cyber Five that includes Thanksgiving all the way through Cyber Monday. So it was a, it was a really good, good time frame for us. That's cool. And I've, now that now that I've had five days of buying everything in the world on my smartphone, I guess I can start charging it again. Get back up the get get have it have it be used for like uh, everyday functions again. Yeah, you can start so, actually uh, kind of making phone. Oh, phone calls. Uh, who does that? Who does that with the phone? Who does that with the smartphone anymore? <laughs> But speaking of mobile, I know one of last year we were talking. Last year at this time we were talking about how mobile grew over the, uh, the Cyber Five. Again, even more mobile growth. Uh, what's your take on this? Uh, is what what's really helping? What's really helping drive mobile growth this time around? Yeah. So to put some data on it, um, last year smartphone was twenty four percent of traffic. This year it was forty nine percent of traffic. So over a hundred percent increase from smartphone alone. Tablet actually went down. It was 20% last year, 13% this year. Uh, and desktop last year was 56 and 38 this year. So, so what happened is smartphone really stole share from uh, desktop and tablet. Um, and this is kind of the pie chart view of the world. But I think going on on top of that is we're seeing more people are online longer. So I think there's an incrementality to this, which is actually pretty interesting. Um, now, one of the one of the negative surprises for holiday this year was smartphone conversion rates didn't really improve. They were actually pretty flat year over year at about 2.2 percent. So uh, what that meant was that even though smartphone was at 50 percent of traffic, it came in right around 27 percent of orders. Um, then if you count tablet in there um, together, they were about 40 percent of orders. So so mobile whether you call it include tablet or not um, is still kind of on the below 50 percent uh, but traffic wise it indicates that we're on our way to 50 percent um, Amazon is known very well for having a really a really robust app uh, and so does eBay for that matter um, what about the other marketplaces how are 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 there apps up to speed is that kind of um, I'm just thinking the ease of use uh, with a lot of places I went to this weekend using apps uh, made me want to stay with the apps, but what about the what about the marketplaces? Are they doing a good job of those? Yeah, the um, so the biggest marketplace is Amazon. Number two is eBay, um, and then you have uh, Walmart has a marketplace, Best Buy, Sears, and those are just kind of they ride along inside of the app, so it just looks like normal uh, inventory inside of there. Um, so Walmart's app has done very well. They um, for a while they struggled, but they they did deal catcher, which is where you scan your receipt and then you get money back, uh, and that has caused usage to go way up. So, um, a lot of the marketplaces do pretty well on mobile. Um, speaking of doing well overall, to Amazon, Kenny four point one. Uh, eBay started off really slow this year. It seemed like it seemed like this happened last year too. They were pretty slow at Thanksgiving, and then they had a big Cyber Monday. What are they doing or not doing? That's kind of like making that like kind of a slow arc through the through the weekend. Yeah, and eBay has always been a little back and loaded compared to Amazon. And part of it is just the nature of how how I think people think about the eBay brand. Um, it has become the go-to location for things that are out of stock. Um, so for example, I'm a big Star Wars fan, as you know, one of the most popular toys this holiday is the little Sphero Bluetooth, um, it's a ball that you can control with your phone. Uh, and that has been sold out at retail for quite a while. Um, and that's doing really well at eBay, for example. So I think that's what happens is as the holiday starts, people are kind of you know, checking off things on their list. And then as they get towards the, the back end of the holiday, kind of starting at Mon Cyber Monday, but it actually helps eBay even further. As they're looking for that, that, you know, uh, that one item they can't find, that's when people tend to go to eBay. Is that a good strategy to have though for eBay? It almost seems to me like almost like a well, that was my safety school when you're looking at colleges. Yeah, it, it very much is kind of the safety channel. That's a good name for it. Um, you know, I think in a world of 15% growth, eBay grew 2.6%. So I don't think it is a great strategy. Um, this holiday was interesting. It's the first time the new management team was running eBay, uh, and since the separation with PayPal. And the way I would I would describe it is they tried to almost kind of. Um, get out of the way of Amazon, Walmart, and the normal Black Friday kind of stuff. Um, so, for example, they were really promoting very unusual kind of items. So, uh, a big thing they were selling over uh, both Black Friday and Cyber Monday was gold bullion, um, which I'm not a big buyer of that, but it's, uh, you know, I saw the listings and 
they're not our customers, but it's all transparent. And they did really well with it, you know, sold millions of dollars worth of gold bullion. I don't know who buys gold bullion, but there's a big market for it out there evidently. So that's kind of a kind of contrarian kind of thing they're trying to do. I think they realize they can't compete on the latest GoPro or the coolest drone or something like that. Um, so I think they've, they've tried to this holiday to differentiate themselves a bit. You noted that the other third party marketplaces, as you referred to them, grew 82.8% uh, over the Cyber 5 and is the fastest growing channel for you guys. I, I'm going to take a wild guess that some of these out had better growth than eBay. Were, were there any that came out as like, were there any that really were like rock stars this uh, Cyber 5? Yeah, what, what was really interesting is, uh, so the omni-channel guys have added, uh, by omni-channel I mean brick and mortar and, and, and online, so click and mortar I guess people call it. Um, they, if you look at the trend on Thanksgiving, other third-party marketplaces was up 180% and then 76%. Those were the two strongest days. So um, what, I'm, what I think happened there is those stores really do heavy promotion around Black Friday, um, and then they open up the Black Friday deals on Thursday, so that on Thanksgiving, so that's why it gets pulled in. So, so those marketplaces got to ride along with that omni-channel kind of footprint and the doorbusters and all that kind of traditional Black Friday stuff. Um, so that's where we saw a lot of the growth is with the omni-channel guys, the folks like Best Buy and Sears that have a store footprint. Um, some of the online guys did well, like a New Egg and a Rakuten. A lot of it really depended on the mix of deals they had and. Um, and how deep they kind of were discounted uh, and, and how much they had kind of prepared with our customer base to launch those deals. Um, so it was a little bit spottier than the Omnichannel guys. The Omnichannel guys had a very solid performance. You mentioned, uh, you just mentioned Best Buy and Sears and for example, Walmart also. I know they said they had, I think 70% of their, 70%, I can't remember, 70% of their online sales came from mobile or exactly what it was. But with that kind of penetration and with the omni-channel, does that put any kind of pressure on Amazon to go ahead and open more than just the bookstore that is open in Seattle? Well, it is interesting. The, the thing that was uh, very interesting leading into holiday, um, uh, in addition to that bookstore that you saw open, um, Amazon really rolled out this Prime Now program as aggressively as I've ever seen them do anything. And Prime Now is where they do uh, an hour delivery for, I think it's $3.99, and then anything after an hour, same day, uh, for free. Um, and they're, they started a year ago, they were in like two metros, and now they're in um, around 20 metros. So they've been ramping that program up very aggressively. And I, I, I think that um, just reading the tea leaves, it seems to me, they, they see something in the data there or they feel really good about that program and how it's kind of helping them in the omni-channel battles. And, and that seems to be, uh, from my estimation, where they're investing right now. Google Shopping, you noted, also uh, grew 24.3% over the Cyber 5. Uh, of course, there's always been those rumors of Google will launch don't launch your own. They're not going to mar launch their own marketplace. They're this, they're that. What really is Google Shopping right now? So, so I think, um, you know, as a consumer, if you go to Amazon and Google Shopping, you can see pretty much all the deals on the internet. Um, there's some, maybe some small, very niche things like an Etsy that you would miss or something like that, but, but you're getting a pretty good slice of everything online. So, so I, think, um, I think it's just one of those places people search when they're looking for a deal. Um, Amazon's not on Google Shopping, which is kind of interesting, so it shows you a set of inventory that's not Amazon. Um, and when you're out looking for a great deal, that, that, that there's actually something kind of interesting to that. Um, so for the holiday, Google Shopping came in at 24.3%, just a little bit above Amazon, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, and you know, I, I think I think it's it's good if 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 you just saw the search data that Google has, Google search AdWords, traditional AdWords was down 1.6%. So I think there's some cannibalization that goes on there uh, on the search page. For example, across our customer base, about 60% of the budgets are, are now in product listing ads or Google Shopping and 40% are in AdWords. And it's just a better customer experience. So, so I think Google's done a good job with that. I, I do, um, they are working on this purchase on Google program, which is on Android only right now, where um, you do a search and you buy right from the product listing ad. Um, I'm pretty excited about that because I think that could be one of the breakthroughs for this mobile conversion rate problem we have as an industry is it's kind of making that transaction a lot easier. So um, this was just kind of a test holiday for Google and hopefully by this time next year, that'll be a big program that they roll out. Announced today that there was eleven billion dollars in e-commerce sales over the Cyber Five weekend, um, but you look over in China and nineteen point three billion in one day for T-Mall. 
Um, Scott, how do you explain this? What does the U.S. have to do to catch up to China? So China has a bigger population than we do, um, and then a larger percentage of their sales are done online. So we need to drive the adoption of e-commerce, um, you know, uh, and uh, away from stores is kind of if we want to look more like China. Uh, another thing I, I always struggle with, and you can see it in our data, is this mobile conversion rate. We need, really need to improve that. When you look at Alibaba's results, for example, they had um, about 75% of their traffic is mobile slash smartphone, and then 60% of their orders comes from there. So they, they have a higher mobile transaction rate than we do. So uh, I think that's definitely something that these programs like the buy buttons that are out there, purchase on Google may help us kind of get more equivalent to what's going on in China. Uh, one big question, Scott, I know you're a huge Star Wars fan and I believe the new Star Wars movie is coming out next Friday. Is that the, the December date? 17th, uh, 18th is the official release date and there's early showings on the 17th. Okay, that actually wasn't my question, but it did have to do with Star Wars, and that was um, I took my son shopping on Thanksgiving Day uh, to a toy department in an apartment store, and there was Star Wars stuff everywhere. But everything I've heard is that Star Wars items haven't been selling too great yet. Do you think this is just kind of a it's a little too soon before the movie, or um, is there something else behind that? Uh, there, there's so much Star Wars stuff, it's hard to kind of parse it out. Um, the, a video game called Battlefront is out. That's quite popular, um, and that's on the Xbox and PlayStation 4. Um, I think a lot of the apparel has done pretty well. Uh, I do think toys are a little sluggish, uh, and we're all just kind of – it's kind of weird because there's characters, and we don't really know what they're all about yet. So I think when the movie comes out, people will kind of pick you – know, hopefully fall in love with the new characters and decide which toys that they want to get. Now, if my son tells me the day after Halloween that he's all ready to be Darth Vader next year, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, you know, I think kids need a little space to kind of figure out if they're Jedi or dark side. So, yeah, you know, I'd recommend giving him a little room and let him work through it.